Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of Sacred Attention Therapy and the Center for Human Awakening. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about Sacred Attention Therapy, the Center for Human Awakening, and our video blog series, please visit our website at www.centerforhumanawakening.com. And Center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. These video blogs support one of the center's core activities, which is collaboration and partnership with individuals, communities, and healing centers, practicing personal growth and spiritual development. Our guest today is Christian de la Huerta, and we'll be talking with Christian about his healing work. And I will now bring Christian on screen. Welcome, Christian. So glad you could be with us on the video blog series. Thanks for taking the time. I'm so uh, glad to be here and honored uh, to be part of it. Christian, I've been familiar with your work through Soulful Power for almost a decade now. Wow. And it's really nice to have this opportunity to connect to learn more about yourself and the work you do through Soulful Power. So to begin today and our sharing, could you tell us a little bit about Soulful Power? What is Soulful Power and what's its mission and purpose? Well, um, I've been doing personal transformation, spiritual transformation work for the last 30 years. Um, under different names, Soulful Power is the, the latest version of it. So I do, you know, weekend retreats, workshops. Um, I take people on, on beautiful you know, outings to gorgeous spiritual settings in like Hawaii and Peru and Egypt and Southern France. Uh, the Soulful Power name came about maybe five years ago, six years ago. And I was thinking about power. The, well, the story is that I had actually um, submitted a, a proposal to a literary agent in New York on a different subject. And um, I don't know if you know what a book proposal looks like, if your audience does, but it's like a huge term paper, you know, it took me like three months with a, with a marketing analysis, you know, like, like a lot of different questions, like what else is out there? Why is this one different? Why are you the one to do it? Who's your audience? Blah, blah, blah. So after putting like three months into it, um, she said, well, great. I want to work with you, but I want to see some of these marketing ideas and your marketing plan implemented, which would have taken me a year to implement um, before we pitch it to a publisher. So for me, it was like putting on the brakes. I was already spending the advance in my mind. And um, it kind of sent me into a moment of crisis, like, like, all right, what next? And then I thought, well, like it took me like three days and I had an, in, an insight. I had about a, about a month before that and in, in sitting in meditation for only the second time in my life. Now it's happened three, but at that point it was only two. I actually heard audible words and the words were the soul of power. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. You know, got the URL the next day, forgot about it. And so when I was pondering this question, like what am I really going to write about if I were not writing for an advance? I had this connection, realization, um, that if I really believed that the single most important thing that needs to happen in our world is the empowerment of women, then what, what, what am I doing about that specifically? Of course, I've always worked with women, but what, what am I doing specifically about that issue? You know, empowerment of women, solo power is like a light went on in my head. Like, how do we step into power in a different way, into personal power that is not hierarchical, um, that is not about, you know, pushing anybody down, force, domination, fear, control, uh, that doesn't re require for us to squelch anybody in order for us to feel powerful. How do we do power in a different way? And so then I made that the umbrella for the work. But I do retreats on different subjects, sometimes on relationships, like how to do relationships consciously, um, intentionally, sometimes about life purpose. Uh, sometimes about um, living heroically. What does that mean to live a heroic life in the 21st century? Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the bigger umbrella of it all is, is getting free, freeing ourselves from, from the limitations um, of the mind um, and connecting with ourselves in, in a deep, authentic way. So much of your work revolves around this, this term you're using, personal transformation. 
Yes. It seems to be the centerpiece, uh, the foundation, if you will, of the work you do. Why the focus on personal transformation? And, and what does this personal transformation look like? Well, you know, the reason that, that I focus on that is because, you know, when I think, when I personally think about the world that we live in and, and the challenges that we're facing at this particular time, sometimes I just get overwhelmed and I say, you know, just screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the beach and eat a lot of dark chocolate and have a lot of sex and, and forget it. It's too much. But then I, I reel myself back and I sort of write, what can I do? What can I do to make a difference? With them? And the answer is always the same. It's continue to wake myself up and help as many people to do the same. And, and my hope is that when enough of us, you know, there'll be maybe that we'll reach that critical math, mass, that hundredth monkey effect, that then that effect will ripple out into the world. Um, and so personal transformation, what does that mean to me? Um, a lot of it has to do with understanding how the mind works, how the ego mind works, mm -hmm. and how we have allowed ourselves to be held back by it, to, to be by all the conditioning, all the fear, all the uh, conscious and unconscious manipulation, and how we keep selling ourselves out for, to a very limited perspective, you know, aspect of who we are. Um, I love the metaphor of, of the stadium. Like if you put a, a baseball in the center of the stadium, that's what the ego mind is. Uh, and that's who we think we are. Who we, who we are is actually the stadium. And we have allowed this tiny, tiny, limited and fear-based aspect of ourselves um, to, to live our lives and to run the show and, and to make very, and we make very significant and very, you know, very important life choices from its very limited perspective. Um, so for me, there's, there's nothing else more important that understanding who we really are um, so that then we can step into our power, step into our purpose and go out and do our, our mission level work in the world. Now, your website speaks, Soulful Power speaks of four primary offerings. Mm -hmm. um, and, and please correct me if I haven't observed acutely. They're offered as follows, sessions, workshops, retreats, and treks. Sessions, workshops, retreats, and treks. Can you tell us a little bit about each of these offerings? Yeah, you've, you've done your homework, Robert. <laughs> um, you know, they're, they're, no matter what the theme of the retreat or the workshop is, there are two things that I always cover. One is the ego that I was just talking about because... Again, there's nothing else more critical in, in understanding, in freeing ourselves. Um, the other thing that I always bring in is breath work. It's a healing modality that I discovered, you know, almost 30 years ago, and I've yet to come across anything that heals mm. as profoundly and as quickly in so many different ways. So the sessions refer to that, you know, the intro, introduction to breath work. So that's an evening. I do them here in Miami where I'm based. I do them in, in different parts of the country. Um, and that's just like a three hour, um, you know, how do we do it? What do we do it? We do it and then debrief it and go home. A workshop is the next deeper dive into the work. It's a, a day long, you know, eight hour, 10 hour event that always includes a breath work session and the themes are, the ones that we've already discussed, relationships, empowerment, purpose, etc. Yeah. Retreat is a longer weaker experience, uh, weekend experience, so um, usually three or four nights, um, including multiple breathwork sessions, depending on the length of the retreat. The trek is the, it's a longer experience. It's to me, it does, the trek is what I call, it's, I imagine if a retreat and a vacation got married and had a child, that's what that's what the sofa trek is to me so we go off to beautiful places in the world um and include some touristy you know beautiful activities go see beautiful settings sometimes we're able to work with local you know like shamans when i, when I work in hawaii for example we work with a grandmother kahuna a medicine woman a, a priestess um in, in peru we did the same with a local person there um Quechua um, shaman 
Um, and then we also do, so we do some retreat work and then we do go see the beautiful sites and go to Machu Picchu or go to see the volcano um, in Hawaii. A combination of both. Now, how do I know what's right for me? How do I know if a session, a workshop, a retreat, or a track is what will work for me? Yeah, it's always different uh, from person to person. Some people come for a session kind of to test the waters out and then end up wanting to do deeper work. Sometimes people just come and do breath work and, you know, kind of as maintenance. Um, and some people think it depends on what the issues that are pertinent in their lives. For some people, that's relationships, you know, which so many of us struggle with. Um, you know, how to, how to do our relationships consciously, intentionally, in a way that they can actually work. Uh, for some people, it's the issue is life purpose. You know, how many of us walk around feeling like we're, you know, we sold our, ourselves so cheaply um, to corporate jobs and jobs that for, in many of our cases are sucking the very life force out of us. Um, and so, and, and for some of us can make those work, some of us, you know, have, have had enough. Um, for, for other people, it's, they've, they've landed on, on the sense of personal empowerment or the lack thereof, which impacts really all of our relationships. So there are different as access points to the work. And it, to me, it's just what, what's, what calls you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, your website, Christian, the bio, mm -hmm. mentions you're an award-winning author. Yes. Can you... Can you share with us about your book or your books? Because it wasn't, it wasn't um, front and center on your website, but could you tell us a little bit about? Yes, the, the book that that, was, that, that refers to is it's, uh, titled um, Coming Out Spiritually. Um, and that was chosen by Publishers Weekly, which is you know, one of the Bibles of the publishing industry. It's one of the, the best 10 spirituality and religious books of its year. Um, I'm almost finished on the second book, um, A Call for Heroes. So what, is it, what does it mean to, to live a heroic life mm -hmm. um, in the 21st century you know, when we don't have the horse hitched outside and the armors and the demons to slay except the ones that are in here. Right. Um, that one, I've, I'm also releasing it as an app. So I'm in that's the midst of creating um, an app um, to go with and in some place you know in some for some people that's all that they will ever do it's sad that a lot most of the people in in our world today are never going to read anything any book that, that I write so that's how I started thinking about that app you know how could I communicate and share that that knowledge in a way that would be palatable that people would actually engage with it so mm -hmm. I broke it into recorded um, bite-sized pieces you know, five, eight, ten minute uh, recorded pieces and then gamified, you know, so it's interactive. It has a, a task. Each lesson has a task. Uh, so people will, um, you know, they get, to, they get to engage with that task at whatever le level they choose. So, for example, if we're talking about forgiveness, they can forgive the, the jerk who cut them off in traffic or the ex who, who cheated on them. Um, or left them for somebody else or whatever. But either way, they accumulate hero badges for completing those tasks. Mm. Uh, and then those tasks, those, ta those um, badges get cached in for guided meditations or um, help them evolve within the, the app. So kind of making, making the process of transformation <laughs> fun and engaging. Beautiful. Now, if people wanted to reach out to you, Christian, uh, to follow up on anything we've talked about today, how could they do so? Uh, my website's probably the best way, soulfulpower.com. All right. Um, yeah, soulful, S-O-U-L-F-U-L, power.com. Okay. And they uh, can reach out to you via email through yes. uh, the website or directly? Um, yeah, they can do it. They can do it directly through the website. They can, they can there's a contact that's, you know, uh, way to contact me there directly. Okay. Uh, they can get on my email list, which is the, the best way. 
to, get, you know, to keep informed of where I am, my whereabouts and the events and all that kind of stuff. Great. Okay. Christian, thank you so much for taking this time. I'm glad we were able to connect. As I said near the beginning, um, been aware of your work for about a decade, and it's nice to be able to uh, learn more about what you do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And thank you for doing um, all, everything that you, you, uh, you guys do on all our behalf. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.